Hello, this is Patrick Dean for Seminar Systems, and this is uh, Facebook Live, and this is a series that we're doing called Your Best Life, and so we're going to talk about uh, ways to create uh, your life exactly how you want to create it, create the results you want, and also make a difference out there in the world. So, um, God, welcome to this Facebook Live, and uh, I just got back from a great training, uh, uh, a PSI basic training in uh, Portland, where we had uh, just a bunch of people in the room, I think 60, 60, 65, 70 people in the room, all coming to really work with transformational transformation, leadership training, personal development, and they were excited. So I was one of the uh, facilitators in that training and uh, learned a lot. As always, I just, I just feel such a great privilege to be in these, uh, in these trainings with people because not only do I get to uh, uh, listen to people's story and learn a ton about it, I get to put it into action in my life. And I'm always uh, trying to be a student in the work that I do. So anyway, in a moment, I'm going to talk about a decision we all have to make in our life. And uh, and I'll tell you about that decision. It's like a light switch. It's, it's an on or off decision. And then we're going to uh, talk a little bit about how we put whatever we talk about into action in our life. Because I really believe whatever we... Uh, Whatever we discuss here only has value if we put it into our life in action, if we create some of the results we're looking for in our life. So um, this decision, oh, first of all, about me, for, uh, for some of you, this is the first time you've been on a, a Facebook Live with Seminar Systems or with me. I'm Patrick Dean. And I am the owner of a company called Seminar Systems. And we do leadership team building and, and uh, personal development training in countries all over the world. I've worked with over 30,000 people in my career. And I also am doing uh, mentoring and coaching, executive mentoring and coaching uh, for people or life coaching. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about that at the end of this Facebook Live. But let's get to this major question. And it's uh, and uh, I'm going to answer. I'm also going to talk story here a little bit. So uh, awesome. Um, here we go. I want to talk about first of all. I want to talk about the decision. Uh, one decision that we can make in life that's really important. And I think that decision is whether we are going to take on life as spectators or as players. I want to distinguish between those two things. I think that. Uh, when you go to a football game or when you go to a game and you go live to the stadium and you walk in there and you have your banners and your and you have your shirt for your team and you really and you cheer your team on and you just feel the energy in a stadium if you, any of you have been to a sporting event like that you feel that energy and that's awesome energy and you get to be around people who are cheering for that team as well and that's that's great but also that is called being a spectator and the reason this is being a spectator is because you're in the stands. You're not actually down on the field, obviously. So down on the field is being a player. Now, there is a value to being a spectator in life. There's a value to sitting back and watching other people do things. There's value in, uh, in uh, it, th there's a safety in that. There is uh, that you can, uh, you can watch other people uh, down on the field, taking the chances and taking the risks. And you're in the stand, and there's a and there's a great benefit for that because, as I said, there's a lot of energy about cheering your team on. There's a lot of energy about being with people that are spectating. Now, the idea here that I want to talk about is a way to look at your life as if you're a player. Now, the great thing about being a player, when you make a decision to be a player, it means that you are willing to get out there and take a look at your purpose in life for one. And the second thing is to set goals and to strive for training and goals and discipline and all those things that you, uh, that you need to do to create the result that you want. And so being a player puts way more uh, pressure on you, but also being a player gives you the great benefit of having wisdom of actually doing what you said you were going to do. So many people talk about, I meet a lot of people that don't want to set goals because it puts pressure on them 
They don't want to really look forward. They're kind of just doing what they do right there. And that's what I call uh, spectating in life. That's where you are working with circumstances. When you sit back and when you're working with commitment, it means that you are looking forward to what's important to you. So as you listen to this tonight, what I'd like you to ask yourself is what's important to you. And as I've worked with all day long with some of my mentoring clients is what is your best life in one year? What do you want to do in three years? Where do you want to be in five years? So many people um, kind of sit back and don't and just let things come at them. And really what I want you to do is to take a look at uh, where you're going to be in three years in one year, three years, and five years, what's your best life look like? And how are you gonna get from where you are now to where you wanna be? And we're gonna talk a little bit about a context, a way of looking at life that we can do that. Now, one of the most interesting things about this story, from my point of view, is the universality of this story. So what I mean by this is, well, let's start this way. We'll start this way. There was a guy named Joseph Campbell Joseph Campbell was a professor at Sarah Lawrence University, a cultural, culture, uh, cultural anthropologist and a study of uh, comparative religion. And he traveled all over the world. And where, what he did was he talked to different tribes of people, different groups of people, different cultures. And what he asked them was about their stories. What he did was he recorded stories that were um, the, the, uh, the, the passed on or old and ancient stories from their cultures. And so what he did was he recorded these stories and he went all the way from the, um, uh, from the far North in Canada, the Inuits, he went all the way to Bali or to the, uh, tribesmen of the, um, of the New Guinea highlands, all the way from Japan to South America and talked with indigenous and original people about their, their stories. And what, at the end of all his, his work, he wrote a book called The Hero with a, with a Thousand Faces. And here's what that book was about. It was about the fact that no matter what culture he was in, no matter where he talked about the original stories of the culture or things that were passed on from the elders to the kids, um, there was one story that showed up in every single culture. Every culture had this story. And he called this story the hero's journey. And this hero's journey is fantastic and amazing. But the, but the amaz one of the amazing things about hero's journey, which I'll talk about the elements of that in just a second, is that it seems to be in every culture, as I said. It seems to be in the heart of who we are. So no matter where you are listening to this, uh, I want you to think about the fact that inside of you, there is a story. It's almost genetic and passed on through thousands of years of human evolution. This story seems to show up all the time through generations and through times and through cultures. And the story is in every human being, according to Joseph Campbell and also Carl Jung, who uh, was a, 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 a person, he was a famous psychiatrist, and he said this story was in people as well. And so I want to talk about what this story is for a very short time, and then you can take a look at how this story applies to your life. So the story of the hero's journey, of course, in every culture, the names of the people and some of the incidences change a bit. But the basis of a hero's journey, it would be um, like if you enjoy movies, you would see you, you've seen a movie like uh, Lord of the Rings, perhaps, or Star Wars, or um, uh, it's written in most of the religious literature from around the world in the Bible or the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, it's, it's in the, um, in, the uh, in the story of Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. And this story, even though everything looks different, underneath there's some basic elements. So as I describe this, we have this story within us, at least according to Joseph Campbell and some other very famous uh, psychiatrists and other people that have studied human behavior. So 
here's how this hero's journey works. The hero starts a journey because they feel a tug or a pull to do something different in their life. They've been doing something or living a certain way. And there's something that occurs inside the hero. They don't really quite know where this voice comes from, but it's pulling them in a direction. It's pulling them out of what's comfortable and easy and pulling them toward something that's an adventure. Now, perhaps in your own life, uh, you're in a place where uh, things are changing in your life and you feel a tug or a pull to do things a little differently. Maybe you're in a transition in your life or something is going on, but every hero has this feeling of uneasiness that comes upon them that there's something more that we can do in life. And perhaps you, perhaps you have felt that even in your own life and in your own experience when you go from one thing or you've been you've been in the same familiar place for quite a while and uh then there's a pull and a tug now in some of the hero's journey stories the hero would be a person that lives in a castle he or she has been well taken care of they have everything they want in their life but they still feel something is missing many hero's journeys start out that way that the hero is, t is very comfortable and has a lot of attention and admiration, but they know that they can't stay there. So in the hero's journey, the hero leaves home. So what the part one of a hero's journey is the tug and leaving home. And leaving home is not always easy because you're leaving what is what you're familiar with. Some of you are leaving what you're good at. It would be like taking on a new job after being an expert or very good at the job that you did have, but it just didn't satisfy you any longer. I don't know if you've ever had that experience. The learning curve was over, what you've done, you sort of had a mastery of what you were doing, but now something inside of you pulls you. It, something inside says there is more to accomplish. That is a classic hero's journey start. So the elements of a hero's journey, what shows up in most of these stories is the first thing is the hero has to confront themselves. And this is, this is what I call the, the desert. So you go outside of yourself and you start a process of personal development, of looking at your own life and of awareness. You look deeply into yourself and you take a look at and ask yourself the question, what's really important to you? what's really important to you. And you ask yourself that question. You get many answers on the outside, but you look inside and go, what at the deepest level is the most important thing to you? And that will start you in a direction. And that's what the hero does. The desert, of course, uh, if you look in the Bible, there are the 40, 40 days in the desert. All of that represents looking inward. The desert is used as always as a metaphor for uh, being in a place that's inhospitable and that you're alone and it's difficult to live in. It's not a place you, you stay forever, but it's a place that you can meditate in, that you, can, that you, that you really confront who you are. Um, there's a great Native American uh, Plains Indian process where the Indians will, uh, in the rite of passage, they have to go out a long, long way out into the wilderness and find a rock to sit. And they will sit for one day facing north and then one day facing west and then south and then east. One full 24 hour period facing each direction. And the reason is you don't move, you don't eat, uh, you're there because you're looking within. I mean, that's just, that's a, a, a rite of passage of a start of a hero's journey, that you really take this time to look within yourself. Now, the next thing that happens for most heroes is they go out of the desert and what they do is they go to an oasis. And in this oasis, what they do is they find uh, companions. Now, the inter interesting thing about having companions in your life is that you have companions that on a hero's journey that ne aren't necessarily people you like or aren't necessarily friends. But they come, become, de be, but you become um, deeply attached 
to these people that are on the hero's journey with you, willing to tell the truth to each other, willing to have these arguments, willing to go back and forth, uh, but they're on the same quest as our hero and as you are. And you will find people in your life that are uh, on the same journey and that you want to travel with them on this journey because they're seeking and looking as well. The people back home that say, oh, you don't want to do that or you don't want to, you don't want to leave, you don't want to try something different, you don't want to do something different, they're well-meaning perhaps, they're good friends, but they're not the hero's journey companion. So you're looking for people in your life that are going to challenge you. And that certainly, uh, that certainly happens. Now, just look at the movies I mentioned, Lord of the Rings or uh, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, where they were at each other all the time. But they, had a, they developed a deep connection and a deep um, love for each other in the fact that they were headed in this hero's journey together. So it's always great for you to find some people in your life who challenge you. Who, who really believe in you and challenge you and have those people around you. Then the next, the next stage of a hero's journey is finding people of wisdom. In every hero's journey, there's, uh, there's the people that have been on the journey before, and those are people of wisdom. Now, they don't go on the journey with the hero. They don't go on the journey with you, but they will share what they're experienced on their hero's journey. And that wisdom and that sharing and finding people of wisdom, like a mentor or a coach, uh, like a teacher, like somebody in your life who has been down that trail before, that really is valuable, incredibly valuable. But like I say, they can't take the journey for you because only you uh, can take a hero's journey uh, for yourself. So once you have met people of wisdom, maybe you take the next step. Now, the next step I call the jungle, and it shows up in all kinds of different ways from in, in the hero's journey story around the world. But the jungle is the real confrontation with the deepest part of who you are. The jungle is the, the, the representation of the jungle, of course, is you're hacking your way through this jungle and you're hacking your way through your past and you're hacking your way through your belief systems and you're hacking the way of everything that you thought was absolutely true. You're looking at your, uh, you're looking at the whole thing that we all have about needing to be right and needing to have the answer and needing, and it, that has to be stripped away uh, for us to get to the next level of our experience. And a lot of the training and work that I do is around taking a look at fixed belief systems and how they limit us and limit our ability to create uh, happiness in life. So that's hacking your way through the jungle. And that takes courage, bravery, honor. It takes a lot of stuff to uh, to hack your way through. But once you're through that journey, once you've gotten kind of clear of the jungle, what the hero sees then, and I'd like you to picture this in your mind as well, what the hero sees is this mountain, this kind of this slope that goes up to this beautiful mountain with snow on the top of it. And we know that the end of our hero's journey, uh, or at least the prize in the hero's journey is at the top of the mountain. And so we've now gotten out of the jungle and we're to uh, uh, the part of the hero's journey called the, uh, the climb. And the climb is about uh, just staying with it and practicing it and doing it over and getting good at it. And during the climb, in every hero's journey story is the fact that you're going to uh, meet what's called uh, the obstacle, the insurmountable obstacle. That's where David and Goliath's story is a hero's journey. David and Goliath is uh, uh, David and Goliath is where you meet something you don't think you're going to overcome, and you battle and overcome it because you just through your commitment. Now, maybe this is a place that you think about turning around. It definitely is. So a moment in an idea to build a business is when, uh, uh, like I was uh, uh, reading about uh, the people that started Uber and they got all this, they got this idea, they brought it into two years of, of incredibly hard work to get this, all this software and stuff in place where they could start this amazing company. And they found out the day before they started the company that, uh, most of the cities in the United States were thinking of banning Uber. And so they had 
to met they met the insurmountable obstacle the instrument insurmountable obstacle they overcame by just putting one foot in front of the other going to battle uh legally going to battle uh and 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 reassuring people going to battle and showing how great this is going to be and all that kind of stuff but they had to really step into the power because most people uh would have just uh or perhaps most people would have just given up so you can't on this battle on the mountain you can't give it you can't give it up you want to keep going and listen because that place that tugged you away from the original is still inside of you so the battle of the insurmountable odds is oftentimes in literature or in movies a battle of inside yourself and it's a battle inside for your confidence and your self-worth it's a battle that you sometimes have to stand alone and do and so the hero's journey has the battle of the insurmountable odds in some way now the hero in a hero's journey overcomes the insurmountable odds and they arrive at the top of the mountain now what's at the top of the mountain imagine going in a cave and here's a huge treasure chest and you open up that treasure chest because this is what you've been looking for and in that treasure chest is uh perhaps uh perhaps it's abundance and wealth or perhaps it's your health uh, uh optimal health or perhaps it's a feeling of connection with a higher power or something spiritual for you perhaps it's a family uh that you're you're looking to connect with or other people that you want to bring into your life something that you've always desired and always wanted and in that treasure chest is that um is that could be that as your um as you as your goal but also in a hero's journey there's something that the hero gets that's worth its weight in gold and more and that's wisdom that you got from taking the journey <laughs> so in almost every story of the hero's journey the hero's return to the village were from whence they came or from when they came where they came from and they were wiser because they did something in their life now the, the now i want to talk about the last part of a hero's journey and that's what i just re- mentioned which is the return home when you return home you're a, from a hero's journey you're a different person than when you started all of you know this in your life that you've done some done a hero's journey of some kind where you learn something about yourself or about people or about the world that changed your viewpoint changed how you saw the world and you became in stronger and more confident within yourself that you brought out courage that you might not have thought you had because you did this hero's journey and you uh you're uh, you're different in a way different than when you started the obligation for a hero returning then is to become a teacher of the other people who haven't taken the journey then you become a person of wisdom our hero becomes the person of wisdom and there's an obligation for a hero to teach and pass on their wisdom to younger people or to people who haven't as i said haven't been on the journey before and that's one of the most gratifying and exciting and amazing places of the hero's journey is to share your wisdom with uh with the people at, in your return and maybe even start people on their hero's journey so the point of the hero's journey is that you are in motion and that you are going somewhere you're not quite sure how it's going to work but you have put yourself into motion um how you know you're on a hero's journey uh that you're moving toward what is hard or difficult or learning something that requires you to get outside your comfort zone a hero learns to not say yes to things that they don't believe in or do things that they don't believe in you say uh you say yes to your principles and values you narrow down and simplify what's important to you you're on a hero's journey uh a hero is a giver 
because they want they know that the greatest uh, greatest one of the greatest things in life is to be able to reach out and give to other people part of purpose um, uh, again a hero's journey is always about narrowing down and removing anything that's superficial that is not part of something that's important to you it's being able to take things out of your life or take things that interfere with the experience of who you are and that's a great part about being a hero and um as a hero you want to really begin your journey with the search for your purpose and you want to do, begin your journey for the look for goals and actions to support that purpose so uh, that is really it on the hero's journey you can sit back and become a spectator and watch things and take it easy and there are moments when that's a great thing to do and then there are moments where you know that your life was set up for some adventure and you want to take that adventure on even when it's hard and even when it's difficult so what you what you want to do really to begin this journey is to take a look at what's important to you one great way to do that is i'm going to encourage you to find a coach i'm going to encourage you to find a mentor somebody that can work with you and walk with you a bit on this journey to make sure that you're on this hero's journey and and so you find this person um it may be somebody that can coach you at work it may be somebody that of wisdom in your family that has a lot of experience but you want to choose this person that hasn't just sat back and sort of knows about it you want to choose somebody that's made the mistakes that been that's been on the journey that's had the wins find people like that they're just so invaluable begin talking to people and be be curious about what other people are saying and listen to listen to people as they talk about some of the things that they came up in their hero's journey so again find uh find yourself a great mentor or coach now if you're interested in that uh taking that step right now i have on the screen here something called my time trade that if you take that URL, copy it and put it into your browser, you're going to come up with my personal calendar. We can have a conversation. There's no obligation. There's no charge for that. But I can uh, set you in the right direction, finding a great coach, or maybe even you and I can work together. I have some great coaches at my that are working with me now around health, uh, great coaches that are working with me around business. And I can help you in any of those areas or turn you on to a great coach. So uh, uh, make an appointment. We can have a conversation or you can email me at Patrick at seminar systems dot com. Any if if you choose to do that, I am available to that. So that's my life work. And uh, believe me, my commitment is to your success. So whatever that looks like. Thanks a lot for being on this uh, this Facebook live. I appreciate you guys and we'll be on next Wednesday. And we'll take on another uh, we'll take on another topic. Get out there and be a player in your life. This is Patrick Dean for Seminar Systems and uh, Mentoring and Coaching. And uh, we'll see you later.